Okay, guys, let's get into today's video about sports betting and Drake. It's no longer the case. Only on FanDuel. DraftKings. Bet. MGM. Prize picks. <laughs> Underdog. Hard Rock Bet. Valley Bet. Points Bet. ESPN Bet. 365. Smack me in the mouth with all of If you watch any sports at all, ads for sports betting have become inescapable. Even if you muted every commercial and closed your eyes until the game came back on, it's still plastered everywhere. DraftKings promos pop up in the middle of a play. There's Bet MGM billboards behind home plate. Fan Here's the problem. The majority of good bettors are always taking away winnings. That's why if you're too good at sports betting, they actually, some casinos and places won't actually let you place bets. And then you have the other side of the scale, which is people who are bad at betting. So now you're racking up too much debt that you're going to be mm, unwilling to pay back. Or should I say they use the word unable to pay back your brokey, okay? You don't understand sports. Why are you betting? Hmm? So, who it then is left? Who then would sports betting truly make sense for? Oh, the damn middle. The middle. The people who bet $100 here, $25 here. He's at work with the fellas. He puts $25 on Gretzky. Obviously, I don't know about sports, but I know about economics, okay? So he puts a little bit of money here. He's able to spend a little. He isn't always winning. He isn't always losing. He just has a nice little medium there. Maybe he's up 200. Maybe he's down five. Doesn't matter. That's where you make the most money on those little tiny bets. You have the majority of America making little tiny bets. And that is what keeps the entire sports betting economy going. Let's dive further into the video. Dual logos on the court, on the microphone. They come at you from every angle, pepper spraying you in the face so you don't notice they just pulled your pants down. They've made it so watching sports and betting on sports are just two sides of the same coin. Like you can't have one without the other. It's become so normalized that it might be easy to forget that gambling can be kind of bad, actually. About 10 million people in the US alone struggle with gambling in some way, a good portion of which are under the age of 25. Gambling addicts attempt suicide at a rate 15 times higher than the general population. The average debt of a gambling addict can range from $15,000 to $90,000. But where most people would see this as a problem, a few people saw it as an opportunity. All that extra money that could be siphoned from struggling families and into the pockets of like 12 CEOs, and we're not doing that because... So in 2018, the Supreme Court overruled the federal ban on sports betting, and since then, Americans have collectively lost over 245 billion dollars on it. That's all. See what I was saying? Do you see now what I was saying the whole time? Do you see what I was saying? Do you see? Do you see? Do you understand what I was saying now? Do you understand? Do you see? I don't need to know about sports. I don't. Obviously, I know Gretzky doesn't play in the damn NHL anymore. I, obviously, I know that. But I'm talking about economics, okay? Understanding about free money that is just laying around that the United States government can tax these major corporations on and collect the bag, okay? Everyone's collecting the bag out here, dog. Everyone's getting the bag. They said, nah, Las Vegas, you ain't gonna be the only one now, dog. We wanna be so. <laughs> Almost $1,000 per person, and that number was from last year. But the bombardment of playful advertising filled with famous celebrities would make you think it's just a harmless, fun game you can play on your phone. Kevin Hart, Post Malone, Chris Rock, LeBron James, Kevin Hart, Peyton Manning, Jamie Foxx, Eric Andre, Patton Oswalt, Vanessa Hudgens, the guy from that Kendrick Lamar song, Kevin Hart. Even the Talk To A podcast is sponsored by Better. Why is it always the people you trust the most? You don't need to know everything about every sport. Good, because I don't. Yeah, me either. You see, I have no clue about sports anymore. The, my knowledge of sports is from NBA courtside 1998 all the way to about 2005 when Carmelo Anthony and the LeBron James class were getting drafted. That's about it. I have a quick little six-year span of sports. And after that, you guys are on your own. All you need is a feeling and a phone. Oh my gosh, I want that is such a bold way to advertise your product. You don't have to know anything about sports in order to bet on them. In fact, we would prefer you didn't. Look, this guy's just chilling in a hot tub. He doesn't even know what sport he bet on and he won money. So go ahead, just open the app and start mashing buttons. I don't know, like, where do you think they got all the money to shell out to these celebrities? Could it be that maybe prize picks isn't the secret gateway to riches beyond my wildest imaginations and maybe they're just trying to get my debit card number so they can take all my disposable income? Whether or not you think sports betting should be illegal, and I'm not even necessarily 
necessarily saying it should be, the fact that they're allowed to advertise it like this is fucking insane. Imagine a cigarette commercial that was like, Oh my God, this is so good. This is the best I've ever felt in my life. I'm on top of the world. The funny thing is, that's how cigarette commercials used to be advertised, actually. <laughs> and I like how the packaging on this cigarette package here is like, you can clearly see that there's a couple of cigarettes missing, so it's already showing you the act of already like smoking them. I suppose having a full pack, it's showing you already the idea of consumption, the idea of like, you must consume, consume the Marlboro Res. Like you could have at least had Marlboro Silvers or, or Marlboro Golds, okay? But we all, everybody knows marble silvers are the best. All right? I'm just going to leave that there for you guys. Typically, the only tobacco ads you see are like anti-vaping PSAs. And I hope there's a future where advertising for betting apps is regulated in a similar way. You can still bet on sports. You can still smoke cigarettes if you want to. It's not illegal, but you're not bombarded with the temptation to do it every time you turn on a basketball game. Even though it's only been six years since the federal ban on sports books was overturned, technology has already evolved well beyond what was available at the time. And now the gambling has gone from being in a place you have to go to to do it to being accessible on your phone at any moment. There's nothing stopping these apps from trying to lure you in constantly and they're really good at doing that. Addiction is intensified, he says, by how much the gambling companies know about each user. That data was used to tailor offers and push notifications to keep the guy in action. They knew the life stage, the customer life stage it was at, so win back, they described it. So people that have given up gambling for a while and they're trying to get them to come back. Just by using these apps, you're giving them data. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like the amount of information that they have on each user, because like with the advent of like Amazon and tracking statistical information and the amount of traffic that these ads, like these uh, applications get, you can track real kind of like real user data in real time, like slight changes to certain fonts or adding different colors or different emoticons or different, I guess, like animations to certain actions. You can track which ones users are more receptive to and which ones users are then willing to place bets on. You know what I mean? Like certain images, maybe they have the image of a sports player. Maybe they have the image of the of the square as it's how small is it compared to the other? Like all these small, different, tiny factors are all used to get you to spend and more money on their applications, okay? Everything is built so that you lose. Think about that for a second. Everything is built so that you lose. So smart. about your gambling habits, which they can then <laughs> weaponize against you. If they realize around 2 p.m. every Sunday is when you're most likely to interact with the app because you're watching 19 games at once and you're starting to get a little restless, they can tailor make a push notification just for you. Maybe they'll boost the odds of a third quarter Tyreek Hill touchdown, or they'll show you a parlay that 50,000 other people have bet on and that many people can't all be wrong. Let's talk about parlays for a second because I think that's one of the biggest contributors to the exponential rise of sports betting. It's parlay time. Put simply, a parlay is when you combine multiple bets into one bet, significantly decreasing the odds of it hitting, but massively boosting the payout you'll win if it does. It's basically the difference between winning a few dollars for correctly calling one coin flip or winning thousands of dollars if you can get that coin to land on heads 12 times in a row. You're so distracted by the possibility of how much you could win that you're not even considering the fact that you definitely won't. Parlays are the lottery ticket of sports betting and these apps have made it so easy to make one whenever you want. The only thing stopping you from putting together a parlay that frankly doesn't even make sense is your own imagination. Because of parlays, I think for a lot of people, gambling has become death by a thousand paper cuts. Maybe instead of losing a lot of money all at once, you're just losing a little bit of money all the time. Sometimes you'll even lose money in a way that feels like you almost won. Ah, oh, five out of six, I was so close. But that means I'll definitely win next time. My only personal experience with online sports betting was a couple years ago when I saw Underdog Fantasy was offering to match your first deposit up to $100. And I thought, okay, I'll give it a try. I watch a lot of football. Maybe I can finally make back some of the money I've spent over the years supporting my stupid shitty team. So I put in a hundred bucks, they doubled it. And slowly over the course of the next two months, I lost $25 every week until it was all gone. Now, if I'm being honest, I think this was actually best case scenario for me. I consider myself lucky that the few times I've tried gambling, it hasn't gone well for me because I have no positive association with it. In the same way that I have no desire to smoke cigarettes because the first time I did, I smoked two back to back for some reason and was nauseous the rest of the night. I have no desire to get. <laughs> Why don't you do two of them back to back? What was that? Like for somebody who is just first out trying smoking, he, does, he does back to them back to back. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot, dude. Uh, okay. Gamble because I've only ever lost money doing it. So even though Underdog managed to get a hundred bucks out of me, I actually think they would have preferred if I won a little bit first. When betting apps give out these kind of introductory offers, it's not just so they can get a bunch of free money, although that's definitely part of it. They're trying to create a customer for life. Bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets. $5, get $200. Hold on, guys. I, I don't know what that is. There's something in my room. There's someone in my room. No, I don't know if it's a rat. 
Okay, it's not. $250. Up to $2,000. Online sportsbooks know that the best way to get people addicted to their product is to make that first big win as easy as possible. So they'll lure you in with an offer that seems too good to be true because all of that is pennies compared to what they're raking in from the people who are hooked. They give you free money to start with. They'll let you try again if your first bet doesn't work. They'll let you throw in one leg of a parlay that has essentially a 100% chance of hitting. They are desperate to make sure you have a good time. They want every time you see that app icon on your phone to think about the rush you felt when you turned $5 into 100 the dopamine, that's what we are all addicted to, bro. The dopamine, the coffee and your sugar, the candies, the sweets, the chocolates, the beers you have, the with your shoddy. No, not the physical abuse, but I guess the Migos said it. I beat the pussy up like it's fight night, I guess. But we're getting sidetracked. Essentially, a lot of these major companies use dopamine to keep you addicted to their product, okay? That feeling, that rush that you get on your first kiss on a dewy fall morning with your lover. Hmm? That's that rush, that adrenaline that you're having in your body. This is what they use in these applications to keep you on them. Things like Instagram and TikTok, like we mentioned before, they keep you on these applications because of dopamine. All right. They understand that. They understand that if you can associate that rush of dopamine with this application, that is where the addiction plays in hand. Like, like the idea of cigarettes and the things like that, you know? So you keep chasing that feeling forever. I just mm -hmm. managed to outsmart them by being so unbelievably bad at sports betting that I never even came close to winning. But because I was curious to see how much online sports gambling has evolved since I tried it a couple years ago, and because I would never leave a stone unturned in the pursuit of research, I decided for this video I should try it one more time. So I signed up for the only legal sports book in my home state of Florida, which I assume is named after famous internet sex symbol Hard Rock Nick. Balls tugged on one by one. Their introductory offer is that they'll give you another chance to bet if your first one doesn't win. On the surface, that almost sounds like free money, but but it's not like you can bet once, lose, and then just take your money back. You, you still have to give them the money. You're probably just gonna lose twice for the price of one. But hey, check this out. I've already unlocked a 1x multiplier, which means for every dollar I earn, I walk away with one dollar. I spent the next 12 minutes hard at work, concocting the smartest and most guaranteed parlays the world has ever seen. With all my bets placed, I could finally sit back, relax, and enjoy a stress-free Sunday afternoon. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Why did I bet on Sam Darnold? Why did I bet on Kirk Cousins? Why did I take the over? Over on Curtis Martin rushing yards. He retired in 2007. The next few hours felt like a roller coaster, but in spite of it all, I was determined to come out on top. Guess who has two thumbs and just won nine dollars and fifty-two cents? This guy. My other thumb's holding the phone. I was down, but now I'm. And since I only lost five other bets, I was just $61 from breaking even. Now, I know what you're thinking. Drew, how could you have possibly known the Bills were going to beat a team significantly worse than them? What are you, some kind of genius? No. I prefer Savant. The truth is, none of this would have been possible without my good luck charm, Michael McCorkle Jones. You can look it up, that's his real name. Ever since I saw him hit the gritty at the Pro Bowl a few years ago, I knew I needed a metal poster of him to hang up on my wall. And thanks to today's sponsored display, that's finally possible. Are you tired of waking up to your boring Hawaii? Oh, hang them up this room and got a cult touch. If you've been Black Friday. That was a really good pro like, promo switch he did there. I'm not going to lie to you guys. All right, so I've been using this app for a little over a week now. And even though I did win a few more bets, uh, all I've really managed to do is turn my initial $100 into zero. It's all gone. I think they know they're on the verge of losing me for good because they're really ramping up the notifications. Most days, I'm getting at least one every hour. They even offered me another second chance bet, this time up to $500. They are so confident, based on everything I've shown them so far, that it seems they're willing to give me any amount of money because it doesn't matter, I'm just going to lose it all anyway. Even in my very limited time using this app, I can already see the traps they're setting for me, and I am falling for them. For some reason, I've done multiple parlays that are contingent upon something happening at the beginning of a game. They offer a bunch of bets that are based on first quarter stats, and I realized firsthand why they do this. Because that one leg can cook your entire parlay immediately. But at that point, you've already committed to betting on this game, and there's so much more game to bet on. So you do. And before you know it, you're betting on Keyshawn George to make five threes? Why did I do that? I don't even know who that is. Why did I think Jake Paul was gonna knock out Mike Tyson? That fight was never ending in a knockout. They punched each other like four times. Obviously they were just in it for the money and I knew that going into it. I only did this bet because they boosted my odds and they only boosted my odds because they knew it wasn't going to happen anyway. The majority of sports though are all rigged, okay? I don't know, actually. <sighs> okay, Seth, let's go, let's do it. Let's do it, let's show them this. Let's show them my secret occult files, guys. We're going into the secret occult files of Sifus. Okay, we're going into my secret occult files about who 
runs the world. Here we go. My world hierarchy map. All right. Here we go. All right. Here we go, guys. People wonder, Seth, why do you do this? Why do I do what? Hmm? Why do I have so much knowledge? Okay, let me share my knowledge with you. It's kind of blurry, but we'll get into it. As you can see at the top, we have the Almighty Allah, the Almighty Creator, God Himself. No one is above God. Now, at the bottom here, which is where we are, right here. Okay, here we go. The Matrix, as Tate likes to call it. This right here is the Matrix. You have the 9 to 5 slave, the sheep, the cattle, the NPCs, you know, right here. Right there, you have right at the bottom the real literal brain rot TikTokers, and then you have the general pop at the top here. This is where I guess I would fit in is general population. All right, it's people who have their own businesses, entrepreneurs, general population. And then who do you have slightly above Gen Pop? You have all the sports, you have Netflix, media, education, the legal system football nfl nba okay they're slightly above gen pop and then you have the world population control okay is these people and then you have the world resource control people who control world resources like technology and medical and things of that nature all right and then you have world financials who control that imf wb b like you know what i mean like there's a hierarchy to this so do you think that the people who are controlling the media and controlling things like football and sports things do you think any of that has any any way of being legitimately actual legitimate two teams actually playing and fighting for honor <laughs> i don't think so i really do not believe so and if you do, you're an idiot and you deserve to lose everything you've ever made on sports betting. You deserve to lose the money that you're saving away for your daughter's college fund. You deserve to lose that. You deserve to take, have that taken away from you. And then your wife wake up in the morning and berate you and say, why did you waste it all away? As you slowly wither from Hotel 6 or Motel 8 all the way down to Motel 6 until finally you find yourself inside of a nasty, disgusting... What do you call those places? Ah, oh, I've lost the name of them. A foster home? Not a foster home, but a foster home is pretty bad. But I guess a hostel. Yes, you slowly degrade from Motel 8 to Motel 6 to hostels to living in a foster home to then living in a homeless shelter, I guess. But your life completely turns into shambles and there's nothing you can do about it because you're an idiot if you truly believe that sports are not rigged. All right, let's keep going. Anyway, it's 2024. How am I still getting scammed by Jake Paul? And on the flip side, when I do win a bet, sometimes I'm not even that happy about it because I'm just like, ah, oh, I should have bet more. You start getting carried away doing the math. I turned $10 into $30, but I could have turned 100 into 300, 1,000 into 3,000, oh my God. It's infinite money. And I think that's one of the most dangerous things about gambling is that sometimes it works. It's a hobby that technically could go well for you if you get very lucky and quit at the exact right time, which you won't, and the casinos are banking on the fact that you won't. Problem gamblers aren't just chasing a feeling, they're chasing this idea that maybe they'll win the lottery. A lot of gamblers can recognize that they have a problem, but see the problem as the way out of the problem. I think the feeling at the time was, if you can just get lucky here somewhere, then potentially there's a way of making this all go away. All go away. I suppose the flip side to that as well, Aaron, is it was it was enabling me to just gamble as much as yeah. I wanted as well. If I just have one good day, I can win it all back. Yes, I dug this huge hole for myself, but if I just keep digging, I might be able to find that diamond I've been desperately searching for. But the sad reality is, even if you find the diamond, you're just going to feel so good doing it that you'll probably dive right back into the mines looking for another one. The truth is, if I'd had that big win, I would have just spent it anyway. A lot of the higher ups at these companies will refuse any responsibility for creating new gambling addicts over the past few years. They'll make the argument that they're just addicted to their phone and our app just happens to be on it. I don't believe that there is an addiction to mobile betting. Really? You don't think so, buddy? Hmm? Who wears a damn orange tie? What are you working at Home Depot, dog? So those teeth, those eyes. Come on, man. A lot of these niggas are psychopaths, dog. <laughs> Let's not get it twisted. A lot of y'all niggas are psychopaths, bro. Talking about, oh, no, yeah, no, no, no. What do you mean? Our application? No, there's no way. <laughs> what do you say? Causing body dysmorphia? What? Our app? 
my beautiful little application that I started in my garage? And now is this multinational corporation you're telling me is causing addiction? No. No, you're silly. You're silly. You're silly. Obviously, we did that. Obviously, what? I'm not going to admit it. Come on. Any more than there is an addiction to utilization of your phone for any other reason. You don't think right. adding a layer of bedding makes the phone more addictive than no, just tooling around Instagram? No. There is probably. <laughs> no. No, no. No. It doesn't. It doesn't make it that bad. <laughs> gambling. It is a real problem. Whether it's gotten bigger or it's just become more noticeable because sports betting is legal, I think is an unknown. Really? Hey, they'd be gambling anyway. Whether it's I'm talking, I'm telling you about this orange tie, dude. It's just crazy. It's on our app that sends 30 push notifications a day and is linked to their bank account or only available in a state on the other side of the country is totally irrelevant. And while there are obviously some people for whom that is true, you cannot deny the fact that making it so goddamn easy to bet anything at any time is leading to more people gambling who wouldn't have otherwise. You're dangling a piece of candy inches away from people's faces and then saying, hey, it's not our fault they grabbed it. They still would have grabbed it even if it was 2000 thousand miles away. Since this is all still relatively new in the U.S., maybe we'll see more legislation in the future to combat this avalanche. In some countries, they no longer allow celebrities to appear in sportsbook ads, or they've banned the ads from appearing during sporting events altogether. America is still in this Wild West infancy, where all these apps are just scrambling to find a way onto your phone before regulations start kicking in. But maybe in the future? Uh, nah, I'm gonna be honest. It's hard to imagine that happening. Uh, I think it's too late to put the toothpaste back in the tube. The leagues are making too much money off it already. Of course they want to shove betting apps down everyone's throats. It gives people more of a reason to watch the games, especially bad ones. While most people would turn off a 20 point blowout in the fourth quarter, you're still glued to the screen because you need CeeDee Lamb to get 12 more yards for your parlay to hit. They've figured out a way to make every moment matter, even if it doesn't. You want to make every game interesting? Step one, open the BetMGM Sports. Why is he walking around in this place here in a suit or just wet? Like, that must have been the worst shoot to be at. Every moment matter, even if it doesn't. You want to make every game interesting? Step. I think his feet and socks and shoes are getting wet, dude. That's not interesting. Why do they do that? Why didn't they just use a spotlight on him? And then that kind of, like, reflected off the reflective surface of the floor. It would have been much more visually interesting, dude. What? Why did you have to make him get all feet wet? You're gonna give Jamie Foxx athlete's foot, dude? Come on. One, open the BetMGM Sportsbook. You know what to do. It's not just sports, though. It seems like these days you can gamble on absolutely anything. You can bet on celebrity breakups. You can bet on which White Lotus character will return in season three. You can. What? And bet on the presidential election. And oh my God, so many people did. Hundreds of millions of dollars were tied up in political bets this year. And if that's not indicative of a nationwide gambling epidemic, I don't know what is. But I'll admit, I'm a little conflicted about this. Because on one hand, gamifying every aspect of our lives only gives more power to those with influence. It creates a financial incentive for spreading deliberate misinformation. It can make you question the motive behind everything you see and hear. But on the other hand, XQC lost $700,000 betting on the election, and that's really funny. If you don't Wait, 700000 because what, he, he bet on Kamala, right? Or like, and what? XQC lost. Didn't he do the whole video with Trump and they were like, he was wearing the Trump shirt. This better hit. The odds were too good. I had to. Don't get it twisted. P.S. Don't get my right. I, even, I can't even vote. I'm Canadian. What? Why does he sound like that then? He sounds like he's from somewhere in Eastern Europe. Odds oh, 2.3. If he if she wins, dude, what are you talking about? There's no way in hell. Like, come on, bro. I could have bet on the fact that Trump was gonna win. There's no way Kamala won that, dude. Like, dude, you lost 700, you lost 700 bands, bro. 700 bands. <sighs> you guys, man. You guys make me so angry, dude lost $700,000 betting on the election, and that's really fun. If you don't know who XQC is, he's a streamer who, at least in every clip I've seen of him, seems to be speaking a language he invented and no one else can understand. Game government, no, 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 no,
He's also one of the many streamers who've massively increased their wealth over the past few years by taking sponsorships from offshore crypto-based online casinos, helping them and the website they stream it on explode in popularity. At almost any point of any day, you can go to the slots tab on kick.com and see someone who is zonked out of their mind, eyes bloodshot red, 12 hours into nonstop slot spins, desperately trying to win back all the money they've lost so far, oftentimes in a situation so dire that even the chat, with no personal stakes involved and only there for entertainment, is begging them to stop. But they can't. They're on autopilot. Every loss is money that needs to be won back, and every win is just more money to gamble with. I randomly opened this guy's stream one day and watched in real time as he won almost a hundred thousand dollars and then say this. 95k! That's fucking huge. We're a tenth of the way back. A tenth? This dude was... <laughs> a tenth of the way back? My guy, my guy, that means this man is down a milli. He's down a milli, dude. He's down. <laughs> the nigga is down a million dollars. And he says the 95,000 is excited about it. 95,000 is a tenth of the way back. Holy me shit dude like you guys are crazy on this betting you you'll risk your whole life for it dude like you'll literally risk your whole life that's crazy was down a million dollars on Big Bass Bash? Now, to most people watching, it's pretty easy to say, hey man, um, you should probably quit while you're ahead. No, a hundred thousand isn't a million, but it's a lot more than zero. The problem is someone in this state of mind isn't capable of seeing it that way. He's not even in Thursday afternoon with the rest of us. He's still on the tail end of Wednesday night. So the rational part of his brain, too subdued to muster anything more than a mumble, asks his chat if he should end it there. Three of the better leave. They all scream, of course you should, but it falls on deaf ears. He's yet to stop spamming spin for even a second. This man is no longer in control of his actions. He's a zombie, relegated to the passenger seat of his own mind as it careens towards the conclusion everyone watching knows is inevitable. But there's nothing he can do to stop the momentum. I have to quit at a certain point. I have to give up. At a certain point, I gotta give up. Oh my god. At a certain point, I gotta give up. Dude, that dog demolished. The man is literally having an internal dialogue with himself about giving up and quitting the team, but yet he's not quitting the team. Okay. Okay. Alright. The balance. Oh my god. That's crazy. Lost over. What's up with the wall, dog? What? For a million dollars today, there's nothing in there. All he can do now is sit in the reality of what just happened. What the fuck? Dude. Come to terms with the fact that despite his and everyone else's better judgment, he got doghouse. Doghouse is what did it. The doghouse is what defeated me. I got doghouse. I got doghouse. I got a full doghouse. Full doghouse, dude. Full doghouse. Full fucking doghouse, dude. Dude. I got doghouse. Did I just watch this guy ruin his life? I don't know, actually. The thing is, it's hard to take streams like this at face value. There's a very well-documented history of streamers on kick high-stakes gambling with money that was given to them by the website they're playing on. So not only are the stakes not high, but it's technically not even gambling. It's just promotion. The entire goal of these streams is just to make the people watching them think they too can go win life-changing money on AskCoin.com. So maybe this is all bullshit. Maybe the only real thing about these streams are the holes he punched into the wall behind him. Maybe he'll miraculously- I'm still trying to figure out the holes behind the wall what's the deal with that he'll be back in a couple days with a suspiciously large balance after seeming to lose everything but clips like this are just the flip side of an online ecosystem currently doing everything it can to convince impressionable teenagers scrolling through tiktok and youtube shorts that gambling is awesome actually and you gotta start doing it yes 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 yes, yes. oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god bang 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 oh, 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 o
great feeling, man. Now, some people have accused these websites of rigging the odds in favor of the streamers, so it's easier for them to farm these clips. And as far as I'm aware, there's no proof of that. I think the misrepresentation of odds here is simply due to the fact that these websites can just keep depositing money into their accounts whenever they lose, giving them unlimited funds to play with. Unless Rubit's gonna give me free money, I think that's like actually it. We really just need Howie to give us a ton of free money. If you're given infinite money, you can just keep betting until you hit a jackpot. For them, there's no such thing. That's the thing with all these guys, bro. Is like, I don't understand why they do this. Why they get themselves involved with the gambling thing. Obviously, they're betting with fake funds, okay? They're obviously betting with fake funds to get into this. But, like, their, their youth and the people that are watching these guys are so impressionable. They don't, they don't have the know-how to understand that, like, the funds that they're playing with is fake, dude. The company can just generate funds to, for you to play in the game because it's it's the company, so they can make fake money that you're playing with. It's not real betting. You're not using real money, but the people that will download the application, they for sure will be using their own money. You know what I'm saying? So like now they're th they're thinking that they themselves too can be just like you and get massive wins. When it's like no, they're not. They're usually mostly kids, dude. So now you're getting all these kids, these minors, to now start playing gambling, dude, to get them hooked on gambling. So that by the time they're 30, they have stress and bags underneath their eyes and they have no sense, like they have nothing left of who they necessarily are. This is a, this is dark, dude. Thing as rock bottom, a philosophy that very much does not translate to real life. In real life, you can hit rock bottom, and when you do, there's no texting Howie to get yourself out of it. What's especially concerning about these kinds of streams is that while sports betting apps are at least targeting mostly grown men, the majority audience for a lot of these streamers are teenagers and young adults. People whose brains have not finished developing yet. People who would have a harder time distinguishing between entertainment and real life, and have less of an ability to evaluate risk compared to people much older than them. It is statistically proven that people who are exposed to gambling at a young age are more likely to develop problems with it later in life. So maybe don't. Exactly what I was saying. Exactly the point I was making. And with that, we will conclude the video. Please go watch the rest of this young man's video. Okay. Drew Gooden, you done did good, Drew. All right. Let's go, baby.